in this problem, we have a plot of some data here. Uh, and this is range versus angle. And we're asked to do uh, a best fit plot, uh, a, a linear type of uh, plot based on this data. So this is designed to use this formula here, R equals V not squared over G sine to theta. Uh, but here they're just graphing R range versus angle theta. Uh, and of course it doesn't make a graph. And we see we see a maximum range here at this is this is 45 degrees right here in the middle, which is where we should have our maximum range. Uh, but of course this isn't a line. Well, we can make this into a line by instead of graphing R versus theta, we graph R versus sine two theta. So we're gonna make a different sort of a graph here. That's like gonna be this, R versus sine two theta. And that should give us something that gives us a bunch of points that seem to be in something pretty close to a line. And then the slope of this line here, M will be V naught squared over G. This value right here will be M. So we can just plot that, we just need to calculate sine two theta of all these different uh, values of theta down here. And it looks like they're in five degree in increments. So if we got 20, 25, 30, 35, so on and so forth, up to 70 degrees. And then these ranges, we just have to sort of make a, you know, a good enough, good enough guess. Like this first one here, this looks like it's um, uh, like 6.9. It's very close to seven. And this one looks like it's 8.6, you know, just a little above 8.5. And this one looks like it's uh, 9.6, a little bit above 9.5. You know, there's, you, when you do this, you might have some slight variations. Everyone's answers might not be exactly the same, but you have to just make some, some reasonable predictions. So I went ahead and plotted this data here. And so we have here our, our x coordinates, sine two times these values of theta, 20, 25, down up, uh, up to 70. And here's the values of uh, the range that I plotted. Uh, and these values just correspond to these values right here. And I plotted those, uh, made a chart here. And if you put them into a graph, there are these blue lines. And then you can just run a linear regression or best fit, and it makes this line. Now, if you don't have um, I just use this using Desmos, uh, which is an online graphing calculator. Uh, you can also do it on a TI calculator, but if you don't have any of that, you could just make your best fit line, just draw it in, and then uh, you're just picking points along the line to calculate the slope. Now, there's some great software uh, in Desmos, and so it just calculates the slope right here for us. So. That's really convenient. We just get that the slope M is 10.9 about. But if you didn't know that um, and you were unsure, you could just look at the graph here and say, oh, well, it looks like it goes through zero, zero here. It's actually not quite as we see right here, but this is, we could just, we didn't know that we could say it's zero, zero. And then it uh, looks like this, here's a point right here. Um, that we could try and look at that seems fairly easy to determine. And it looks like this point right here would be uh, 0 0.45 comma 5. And so if we wanted to calculate that slope, it would be easy because it's just the ratio of these two since this is 0, 0. So if we weren't sure, we could say, okay, M equals about five over 0 0.45.
And if you make that, you're going to get um, approximately 11.1, I believe. 11.1. Uh, so that is pretty close to this value, 10.9. So we see that we got a pretty good, good approximation here using this uh, just picking points along the line. The important thing is that the points we pick are along the best fit line, not necessarily these data points we have here in blue, not these particular points, but points along the line. And that line may not include any of these actual particular points. We're looking for these, we're gonna pick points for measuring our slope that are actually on this best fit line. But I'm gonna go ahead and use this 10.9 value we have here. And if you remembered, we said m equals v naught squared over g, which equals about 10.94. Uh, and that's going to be meters are going to be the units. And so we can then say, well, V naught is just going to equal 10.94 G. Meters square root. And we're just going to use 9.8 for G. And then that's meters squared per second squared. When you square root it, it's going to be meters per second. So that seems correct. So 10.94 times 9.8. And then we're going to take, which is 107.2. And then we just take the square root of that. And that's 10.35. So V naught is approximately 10.35 meters per second. So that is our launching velocity. And then we have a follow-up question here, which is asking us to find the maximum height above the ground at 36.9 degree launch. So we're saying that our launching angle is 36.9 degrees and we wanna know what is the max height. Well, to do this, we can just use the formula V squared minus V initial squared equals 2G delta Y. And when it gets to its max height, uh, of course, V squared is zero. So then we can just say delta Y equals negative V naught squared over 2g and we should be careful that this this is really in the y direction so that's going to be negative v naught sine theta over 2g squared So that is negative 
10.35 times sine of 36.9 degrees, and this whole thing's going to be squared over 2 times 9.8. And this will be in units of meters. And then all we've got to do is calculate that. And there's a, there's a negative down here. This would be negative 9.8. So these are going to cancel as they should. And we're going to get a positive height. So you just have to put that into a calculator. And And putting all this in and calculating, we get delta y equals about 1.97 meters.